<coughs> All right. I did not tell anybody that I'm doing the live, so I'm just going to do it, and then I'll send it out to all the groups tomorrow. But I want to go ahead and put it on two of my groups right now so I know that it's out of the way. And then I'm going to get into what all of these energies are. This is the weekly healing messages for July 11th through the 18th. And holy moly, that's all I can say. Let me go ahead and get these two taken care of really fast. Shut to my page. Yes. Hi, my love. Okay. He's like, Bonnie, I'm here. I know. it's It's got a lot of, a lot of Leo Lion energy going on this week, baby. So to my group, mm -mm -mm. and then everybody else I will share out afterwards. I'm going to turn down the volume before this sucker starts getting loud. And I want to make sure that the energies that I'm picking up stay really good because I'm picking up a lot. Um, and I want to make sure it stays very high vibrational. Plus, I'm going to be holding my Lemurian Quartz to make sure we're working it out that way. Because I already took down all the notes the Spirit gave me for this week. And then we'll just see whatever else comes in through them. Like my Lemurian Quartz. I love my baby here. Alright. Now I want to make sure that I say this and get it done and over with as quickly as possible. <clears throat> so I can get in and out of your life. And... In case it starts coming out really bad, let me just put it this way. It's not bad, but unless I might have some word vomit. So I'm trying to make sure that I'm saying it in the right kind of way. Let me just put it to you this way. In my true chart, in my true chart, I've got the moon going over top of my natal sun. And then I have the sun going over top of my natal moon. And then, because I'm a Leo, I've got Mars and... Venus sitting right in between my vista on my natal chart. So I'm in full roar Leo lion roar, you know, and 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 I, it, it, I, I'm not gonna be able to stop it. It's just not necessarily good for me to be around mankind. <laughs> so I'm gonna put out the video the best that I can and, and be as positive as I can about it and get this energy out there. It's not that it's a bad thing at all. Like I said, it's just some word vomits very much able to come out. All right. This week is very much. Again, this is from July 11th through the 18th. We have some major energies taking place this week, and I'm going to walk you through them all. I am given the number 6, 4, and then 2. And yes, they are going backwards on purpose is the way I'm being told it from spirit. Because six is about coming into unconditional love with yourself and the family or the family that you've created and coming into a new level of humanitarian energies. Then we go into the four. For me, four speaks to us of the universal energy or the universe will have its way. Meaning... There are some things you cannot break. There are some things you cannot change. I don't care how good of a witch you are or a psychic or a medium or with your manifestation. There are some things that you will be blocked on and you cannot change. You must learn to work with them. Such things as there are the four seasons. You know, there is the four, uh, there's the four seasons of the year. So, you know, where you go through autumn, spring, winter, fall, you know, summer, and then there's the four, which is the sun, the moon, the planets, and space itself. Then there are your four directions. There are four, is what is given to me when we, when it comes in, from spirit is very much a universal thing, and you must learn to work with it, not it work with you. So, six, coming into new levels of humanitarian and loving energies. This is also going to deal with karma, even though normally I do not say that, but that's what I just heard. This will also deal with karmic energies, as well as to how you ascend, evolve, and grow within that spiritual, soulful connection. Then it brings us all the way back from the six, the four, to the two. The two, for me, is 
standing in your power, but in all areas of your life, in your emotional, your mental, your spiritual, and your physical. It's coming into a complete balance within these energies. So it's working backwards because apparently we are at the six and we need to move to the two. Okay, you are going to be dealing with a ton of energy. We have Chiron, which is going to go retrograde during this week. Chiron is the wounded healer, which means healing is going in overdrive, especially in a shadow effect. Okay, not to mention, you already have, what is it? Pluto, Saturn, Jupiter in retrograde. Chiron's also in retrograde. Neptune's in retrograde. This is all inward work. This is inward work and a hell of a ton of a lot of mirroring. Now, what Spirit gives me before I get into the other stuff to help explain this is Spirit is giving me that, um, I don't know how old you are or if you're into comics. Because what I took it from was the really old Superman movies. But... Those who are into comics will also get this. I'm getting from Spirit, because they directed me to the Superman movie to help understand what this energy was. Yes, you love my Lemurian courts, don't you? Um, they're giving me, what is this thing called? Let me find it. In my notes here, let me find it. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. I have so much stuff going on that I'm trying to keep up. Mm -mm -mm. Where is it? It's on there. I know it is. Where did I write it? It's the... F it's... It's... It's a phantom. The phantom zone. So, if you're into the comics or you're into Superman, whatever, what they gave me is the phantom zone. Now, in one of the Supermans, there's the bad guys that are coming forward because the way I saw it was the reflection of the phantom zone as it's flipping over and turning in space and it's coming to Earth to land. The phantom zone is considered a prison for the people that are put in it. So you are dealing with your energies that you have imprisoned within yourself. Because they also turn around and give me the later part of the movie where Superman has the thing called the Eradicator. Which, the Eradicator is both a protector and a strip stripper of power. Because anybody who was inside of the Eradicator, which is inside of their power, inside of their shields, and protecting themselves, and that higher ascended energy... From the movie, if they were in the Eradicator, then when it was doing its thing, it stripped everybody else who had power of their power. But, if you were not in it, I mean, if you was in it, then your power was protected. So this is telling you to make sure you're protected and you're shielding your energy at this time. But also doing it from a higher ascension energy from within yourself. Okay? Because like I said, I was given six, four, and two. So, it's giving us a direction right off the bat. Now, all week long, you are going to have massive power energies coming from Saturn, Mars, and Lilith. And that's because they alone have a lot going on, but you have a lot of the astrology that is sitting on fixed stars. And on these fixed stars, they are thing up in a form they are bringing extra energy to that Saturn energy that Lilith energy and <laughs> that Mars energy so they're making those three energies even more powerful than usual now this is the question that I am given for you where is ego gone just a little bit too damn far versus where is ego good I'm sorry, I'm being told to hold this one spot. Where is ego good? Because not all ego is bad. I mean, it turns bad, but it also will keep you in line. It will also keep you just shaken up to make sure that you're actually moving forward. But then, 
It'll question you about moving forward. But then once it gets into your head, it starts working against you. So where is ego working for you and where is it working against you? Where is it helping you versus where is it blocking you? Because this energy I'm getting is coming from Lilith directly. Lilith, for me, she gets mad at me a lot. Because I don't mean to put her down. Because... I don't have anything against her, but the way I see her in astrology often has to do with ego. But Lilith is also our soul fire. She reminds us, you were put here to burn your soul. What does your soul desire and burn for? Why are you going to let anybody strip you of that? Why are you going to be demoted within your soul being? To less than what you are. Why are you going to be manipulated into thinking that you're less than you are? But she also can go a little bit overboard and jump into ego. And this is where I get it because I'm getting the soul fire versus the independence and the character of who and what you are. Where are you, your independence, your character, that soul fire, actually helping you versus blocking you because you're a little too damn cocky and you're in your ego because I'm being reminded you're going to deal with a lot of karma a lot of mirroring this week a lot of ego a lot of fire and a lot of the bull versus the lion and when I say the lion I mean like the lion of God within you because all of this energy is speaking of our word vomit and where we're too aggressive and we act too quickly and where it actually comes back to showing we are immature and we have not grown spiritually because this has everything to do with the alpha and the beta the alpha and the beta the beta is the end but it's also the very beginning but what spirit directs me to when i get to that is bet in hebrew and if you've been following me for a long time you know, I just go wherever in the world spirit gives takes me. And what they're directing me to is bet in Hebrew, which is actually a number two, which is where spirit stopped. Was six, four, two. And it has to do with coming into harmonious balance within all areas of your life. Between your own self, your own ego, your physical, your mental, and your spiritual well-being. And acknowledging all of that. The bet in Hebrew also speaks to you of the house. But it's the house that houses the soul. It is the building or buildings within you that house the soul. It is the building of the manifestation. So how far away from you from soul are you versus ego because it is the house that is that houses your own personal personal inner godding which then creates the manifestation so again where are you allowing your ego to not work for you and it's actually keeping you it's actually blocking you where are you allowing your blocks to keep you from growing and spiritually maturing and soulfully growing and evolving with what you want in life? Now, I'm going to take you back to Chiron. Like I said, Chiron's the wounded healer and he goes retrograde this week. And he has massive power going on with all of these other energies that are going to be speaking to you of your inner truths. Of getting into that inner 12th house, your grief, sorrow, shame, blame, and where are you lying to yourself about it? Before I do, though, I'm, gonna ex I'm just going to explain the astrology. But before I explain the astrology, I'm going to explain some of these fixed stars real fast so you'll understand why the power is so aggressive and massive right now. And why the word vomit is so massive, as well as, like I said, the karma, the ego, the fire. It's the inner bull versus the inner Leo, the inner lion of God that resides within you. And where are you getting 
trapped in between. All of this is coming to a full moon, remember, on the 23rd. That's in a void, of course, from Capricorn to Aquarius. All right? You are having in Leo, where Mars and Mercury are. Not to mention the moon's going to cross over this energy. You have two fixed stars. One backs up the energy of Mars, double-timing Mars. The other one backs up, because I'm not going to try to pronounce them. They're a little bit long and hard to pronounce. So there's two stars. One ba ba backs up Mars energy with another Mars energy. The second one backs up Saturn with Mars energy. So you're talking about setting proper boundaries within your independence, within your spiritual growth, and are you strong enough to set them with the Mars energy? Because Mars can be very egotistical in Leo. Like I said, it's, uh, I'm a Leo with so much going on right now from my natal house and everything else that I'm just like, it's not necessarily good for me and to be around mankind, so let me just stay at home, but I'm going to make the video. <laughs> okay, the next one is the sun in Cancer. The sun is in Cancer, but it's crossing over Pollux and Castor, or Castor and Pollux, which are the thesis eyes, which is also what I call snake eyes. It is the dragon's eyes, okay? But it's the herdsman versus the warrior. It is the human versus the immortal. The ego is the human. The immortal is the soul. Okay, and it is crossing the sun, or the sun is crossing it during this week, all week long. So it's definitely going back and forth between soul, ego, soul, ego, and that's why Spirit said, bet, it is the house of the soul and the building of the manifestation, and if you can get to your soul fire, and you're able to overstep all of that ego energy from within, then you are getting to the power of your own inner godding, which is where manifestation truly is created. Now, Castor and Pollux, which are the twins of Gemini, they hold the energy of Mars again and Mercury. And this is part of that word vomit. It is where you get get stuck in between the mortal and the immortal from within you. Coming over, the sun is illuminating it in that fourth house. Coming into your energies of your inner emotional security and home. This is home. More than this is home. This is always going to be part of home, but this is where... The death, the birth, and the resurrection take place inside the home. The home of the bet, which is the home of the soul. All right? Now, you also have Saturn in Aquarius, which is sitting on another fixed star, which backs up the energies of Saturn, doubling it up, and Mercury. Those rules, walls, and boundaries. And that one literally is called the swallower. So it's in a form, what I've really heard from them just then is that's more of a devourer, devourer of the energy. Devourer. I cannot say it, but you get what I'm saying. So are you, are you, are you ingesting all of the energies instead of setting the walls and boundaries? Like I said, this is time for school and you're getting a pop test. These energies are massive this week. Not to mention, you also have Uranus, which is sitting on a fixed star that backs up, again, Saturn, Mars, and Venus. So, super fire energy and super Saturn energy this week. Now, we also have, up until Thursday, you have Uranus, which is not getting along with Leo. With Libra, not Libra, sorry. Uranus is not getting along with v Venus and Mars and Leo, which is your universal second house of your self-worth, your self-value, your self-esteem, and how you create and spend your money. Okay? Your independence, your individuality, your uniqueness, your freedom, your unpredictable energy that lies within you that only can be shown by you because it's being authentic. And it is not getting along with your creative 
fifth house of the Leo. That's also the bull and the lion. The creativity reminds us. I always say this to my to my clients. Your fifth house is your creativity. It's how you is your creative expression. It's how you bring your authenticity out. But you also want to make sure that you have the people in your life that support you coming into that authenticity and into that creativity. Because if you're too busy doing everything else for everybody else, then when are you having time for you? This is your pursuit of pleasure. Taking it back to, Le to Lilith and your inner soul fire. Where is your soul fire being met? Where are you being able... <laughs> what I just heard is where are you able to purr like the cat versus stuck being the bull in the china shop? Okay, now you also have, after the 15th, you have then Cirrus, Cirrus and Lilith and Taurus are not getting along with Leo. So it shifts from Uranus to Cirrus. And Lilith, Lilith is your soul fire. She is your independent energy. She is your independent energy. She is your soul fire, but she can get a little tripped up in ego. Cirrus hits beneath beneath the belt. It's too close to home, and it is karma. In Taurus, your individuality, uniqueness, freedom, self-worth, self-value, self-esteem, created your money. Where are you standing in your way? Versus that creativity, because what it's also not getting along with in that T-square from the 16th out, or the 15th out, is Jupiter. That 12th house of grief, sorrow, shame, blame, insecurities. Your skeletons in the closet. Where are you not seeing yourself? Where are you in your own, what is that called, phantom? From the movie. Where are you in your own phantom zone? Where are you still stuck in your own prison? Like I said, you're getting hit hard this week with it. You have Neptune, though, which is in retrograde, getting along absolutely wonderfully with Cancer. It is helping you to create. But what will you create? Are you creating from inner emotional security? Or are you creating from lack of it? Okay. And then... You find Pluto, which is death, decay, and destruction for renewal, rebirth, and regeneration. It is the stripping of the ego to find the soul. It is not getting along with any of that sun energy, which is also the very ego versus the immortality. Meaning, you don't want to see it. Meaning... It, you, you just don't want to see what you don't want to see, and it's going to be thrown in your face, and you're going to be forced to see it. But will you see it? Is what you're going to be seeing this week. Because then you have Lilith, again, which is getting along great with Pluto. It's there. It's all there for you to pick up all of your pieces, collect your soul pieces, and move forward. But you've been given just enough magic to go, well, it's up to you to create. Free will's a bitch, my love. Saturn is not getting along with Uranus. Rules, rules walls, and boundaries. Restrictions. Where are you going to say, no, not anymore? Versus shifting those walls so they do work. Or are you just so damn comfortable with the walls you have that actually you're staying in that phantom zone, that prison? Chiron is not getting along with Mercury. That's your alpha. Is not getting along with your inner emotional security. So the communication that's coming in may be harsh. It's going to be mirroring. It's going to be telling you stuff that you may not want to hear. But the point is, it's time to hear it. So will you hear it and grow? Like I said, you're getting a pop quiz. Or will you choose to stay where you've always been? You have on the 15th, which is Thursday, the day that Chiron goes retrograde, you have a grand trine, which is a very positive, powerful thing. Lilith and Taurus is talking to the moon in Libra, which is talking to Pluto. And Capricorn, this is setting 
boundaries or setting healthy relationships and getting rid of, <laughs> I just heard, like, like, how, 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 how was it? I just felt, I heard like cor cutting the cord of the unhealthy relationships and setting healthy ones that work for the soul. But it's also the moon. So this talks about our physical reality. It talks our, about our emotional reality and how that affects our actual body with the relationships we keep. Now, all week long, the moon is going to be moving through Leo where it's going to have that aggressive energy even more than usual. Then it will move into Virgo, where you become anal retentive and you pick everything apart. Then it's going to go into Libra, where you want to make everything okay and let me make balance. Let me try to make it better from what happened over the last two days. But it's going to hit Scorpio, and when it hits Scorpio, that transformation is going to start to hit. It's going to hit, transformation, transition, and I'm being given the death card. Remember... The death card is the end of something and the beginning of something new. So release, surrender, and let it go. You're moving towards a full moon. In Aquarius, coming off of a Capricorn full moon, with still some Capricorn in this one. So you're setting a new foundation from a higher ascension. But are you willing to do the work? Bet. Hebrew. Number two. Six, four, two. The soul, fi the soul fire is in the house of the soul. That's where your guiding seat is. Get rid of the ego. I love you guys. Bye.